So we've had a look at describing the long term trend. The next thing you want to have a look at is whether there is a seasonal component to your time series. So here we've got the um, graph where we can see the seasonal effects more easily. So on the um, previous video, we had the long term trend um, to do with road accidents. This is a similar data set, but looking at something um, slightly uh, different from it. These are the reported injuries, whereas before we looked at casualties. So these are the number of reported injuries from road accidents in New Zealand from 2011 up to 2016, um, split into the different months in each year. So on the left hand side, we have all of those data points plotted on top of each other. So each year is plotted separately um, on that same graph on the same scale. The different coloured lines are the different years and you can see that these roughly follow a similar pattern. Um, it's not exactly the same, but you can see some patterns to it. And so we can tell that our graph does have some seasonality, that there is some sort of seasonal trend we want to comment on. Now, on the right hand side, um, the graphing program takes the average of each of those data points within each month. So for January, it adds up all of the um, data points for those separate years from January and averages them and then plots them on the right hand side. The same for each of the months as it goes through. So you can see what's happening on average within each um, season on the right hand side. So that seasonal effect tells us how much above or below the trend line um, it is on average. That dotted line in the middle, that zero, is the long term trend line that we looked at on the previous video. And then each of those data points tells us how much above or below the long term trend line we can expect um, to be. So it takes the average of how much above or below it is. So if we take a bit of a closer look at that, we can see that the number of injuries caused by road accidents followed a similar pattern each year from 2011 to 2016. This is how you'd start writing about it. And then if we take a look at the average there we can see that the graph shows the average number of injuries caused by road accidents within each month. So then you want to comment on some particular aspects, things you, that you've noticed there. So the highest seasonal trend is seen in March each year, where the average is approximately 155 above the long term trend line. This drops to approximately 45 below the trend line in the next month of April on average. And remember, we're always talking about averages here. We're talking about the average seasonal effect. It might not be that every single year had that exact same pattern. Um, some of those years would have varied a little, but we're talking about the averages when we're looking at this graph. The second highest average over the year was in May where the seasonal effect is approximately 75 above the long-term trend line. And we can see that the lowest average number of injuries occurs in September, where the seasonal effect is approximately 110 below the long-term trend line. So what we've done is gone through the graph and picked out some of those important points and started to talk about them. So the, the highs and the lows, those important bits and talked about how this changes throughout the year. Then what you do is go away and do some research when you're writing about this as a project. You'd research what happens in those months that might cause those seasonal trends. So what exactly is important about that time of the year? Why do we get um, so many more injuries caused on the road in March than um, in the rest of the year? For example, we, there's, a, there's a term in New Zealand called March Madness where the roads get very busy. So with more traffic, you would expect there to be more injuries. Um, it's things like uh, schools being back, um, people going back to work. March is not a time when lots of vacations are taken um, and unis go back. So there's lots of people on the roads and it might cause more accidents. At the other end of the year in September, um, you might see a drop off as um, the opposite sorts of things happen. You'd go away and research exactly what's happening there um, to cause those things that we've commented on in the paragraphs above. And then you want to take a look at how well does that data fit with the seasonal averages. So we've got a graph of averages here, um, but we want to take a look back at the original graph 
and see just how well does it actually fit. So if we go back to comparing the two graphs, we can talk about this um, seasonal average, whether it's a good model um, or whether there's quite a lot of variation in our data. So we'll put these two graphs side by side again and we can compare what's happened on the actual data on the left hand side with the averages that we used to model those seasonal effects on the right. So you might want to talk about some things like the 2014 um, January data being much, much lower than um, what we saw happening in the rest of the years where they stayed sort of up here around where the average is. Um, and then you could talk about um, if there are any years that don't follow the same sort of pattern. So perhaps you might want to pick out 2016, where we can see we don't have the highest peak in 2016 in March. It actually happened on the May spike for 2016. The March one was actually a little bit lower. Now you can talk about those sorts of things um, and also go on and look at what's called the residuals graph, which we will come to on the next video.